ओके ए वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल डियर ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स इन क्राइस्ट वी वेलकम यू ऑल इन द नेम ऑफ लॉर्ड एंड सेवियर जीसस क्राइस्ट फॉर दिस फ्री बाइबल स्टडी सो टुडे एज वी आर सीन लास्ट वीक वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी इन डिटेल अबाउट द स्टडी ऑफ इजिप्ट एंड दिस ग्रेट पिरामिड्स you know dear brother as we mentioned the name egypt the thing which comes to our mind is about the egyptian civilization and about the pharaohs of egypt and moses and of course we can't even try to forget the great pyramids which are located in egypt so one of the ancient wonders of this world which is still existing and the only still existing uh, ancient wonder of the world is uh, the only the great pyramid of uh, giza so before to this one there were lot of uh, other uh, ancient wonders like uh, pharaohs of alexandria colossus of rome the statue of zeus the temple of uh, artemis the hanging gardens of uh, babylon and uh, muslim all these things were there but the only existing the ancient wonder of the world is the great pyramid of giza and today of course as we all know the modern seven wonders of the world are totally different than the ancient wonders of the world so what is the speciality of this pyramid if you see dear brethren this pyramid is not like a ordinary pyramid because there are more than 200 pyramids in the whole world so the pyramid is not only in egypt but it can be found in various other places like japan like china and various other places also you can see pyramid there are some pyramids which are underwater also so but this pyramid especially the pyramids of egypt are totally different and is a wonder uh, to be compared to other uh, pyramids therefore in uh, egypt itself uh, there are more than 118 uh, pyramids and uh, the pyramid what we are going to study is uh, called the pyramid of giza this pyramid height uh, is uh, 486 feet height and the uh, breadth of it is uh, 764 feet so if you see the whole area that is uh, covered by this pyramid uh, it is almost 13 square acres so what do you mean by 13 square acres it is not a very small place but it is a huge place compared uh, to the area you can see it is almost equivalent to the size of a 10 football ground so until the 21st century the great pyramid of giza was the only tallest man built structure so until you can see the 19th century if you see dear brethren burj khalif is now the tallest ever building uh, built by man so dear brethren <coughs> this pyramid is uh, having more than 23 lakh blocks and the overall weight of pyramid is uh, more than uh, 60 lakh tons and some of the stones here have the average weight of uh, 880 tons to 16 tons that is a maximum weight of, of uh, some of the stones in the pyramid but average each and every uh, boulders or blocks the granite blocks has a minimum weight of uh, 16 tons dear brethren so the pyramid it is built upon uh, huge granite blocks it is not a small ordinary blocks it is a really more than 15 to in you know, 20 feet in height and the width of the blocks is really uh, to be wondered it is also uh, more than really 10 to 15 feet or 20 feet or 30 feet it even goes to 100 feet in length also dear brethren you can see here a man standing uh, at the base of the pyramid you see he is a almost 6 uh, feet uh, man and uh, the blocks are much higher than this one that means the average height uh, you can see it is nearly 
15 feet in height. See, with uh, these types of blocks, the pyramid is been built. So, how did they move this pyramid? And uh, sorry, how did they move this uh, granite blocks to build the pyramid? How did they uh, pull it out from the quarry without any modern equipment? Is really a wonder, dear brethren. Because even today, there are a lot of quarries nearby where we can see these uh, blocks are left like that only. So, how did they carve it and with a precise fishing, finishing? How did they pull it out uh, from the mountain? You see, and uh, how did they shift it uh, to such a place uh, without any modern equipment? Is really wonder. You know, dear brethren, the granite blocks are placed one upon another in such a way that there is not even a small gap for a sharp blade to even pass between the two blocks. So that is the finishing that has been given nearly 4,000 years before. And uh, you see, many believe that uh, this was a, a pyramid. It was a, a broad. It was these blocks were uh, brought uh, from the Mount uh, Sinai, dear brethren. And uh, you know that uh, Mount Sinai is given in the Bible, and that is famous uh, for uh, uh, the mountains, uh, and uh, uh, that is famous for uh, uh, granite uh, uh, places. You know, and very it was a very hot place. And you know, dear brethren, uh, it is from uh, these places also that many blocks were. Uh, brought uh, to the uh, pyramid place, uh, that is uh, Egypt. So in during those days, uh, there was no modern equipment of uh, transportation like uh, trucks uh, or cranes uh, or uh, any police. But in spite of all these things, uh, with just uh, mere human force, how they brought these uh, massive blocks without any crack or without any damage and uh, built it up so high of nearly 700 feet high. How did they build uh, this pyramid uh, is really a wonder. Originally, this pyramid was covered with uh, casing stone. You can see a part of the casing stone is left here. Originally, the pyramid was built with a casing stone. But uh, now you can't see any casing stone that is totally been uh, pulled out now. So originally, the pyramid is to look like this, uh, dear brethren. It used to look like a, a bright jewel shining in midst of the desert, the hot desert. It used to shine like a jewel, like a, a pearl. It used to shine. Therefore, you know, uh, the Hebrews, the ancient, uh, uh, sorry, the ancient Egyptians, the ancient Arabs, they used to call it as Iket. Iket means like a glorious light. Because in uh, those days, you know, dear brother, uh, Egypt, uh, this pyramid uh, was used like a landmark. See, landmark means, how do you find Egypt? Means from the desert, you can, if you see any bright light shining, uh, a glory light shining, a sparkling light shining, uh, they used to identify this is the direction to go to uh, Egypt. Because it was uh, shining uh, so bright. Uh, in the desert. And moreover, on the top of the pyramid, uh, yeah, the final block uh, that was uh, shaped in a, uh, a sharp structure, a corner structure, that was made up of pure gold. But today, we don't find uh, any of these things uh, existing there because all these things uh, have been uh, uh, you see, stolen by the uh, robbers, uh, you see, the caliphs, uh, the uh, Arab uh, caliphs uh, have stolen all these things and they have built uh, their own, uh, you see, uh, masjid uh, and own mosque uh, in various places, in various Arab countries. Uh. Therefore, the pyramid uh, is uh, one of the great uh, wonder and it is the only man made structure that is uh, visible to our eyes, to our naked eyes, even from the moon. <clears throat> and uh, this pyramid has got so much of uh, stones and so much of blocks in it uh, that if you remove all the blocks, you can uh, build a whole, you see, two feet high wall around the world. Around the circumference of the world, you can build a two feet 
high wall. So, so much of stone is there in this pyramid. You, this pyramid is so strong that even today, you see, the Egyptian government doesn't have sufficient of funds to destroy the pyramid, even if they want to destroy also. And moreover, this pyramid has stood many wars, has stood many earthquakes and many floods, but it is still existing. Dear brethren, and moreover, not only this one, this pyramid has got many geographical, mathematical, scientific, and astronomical calculations hidden in it. Like, for example, the Great Pyramid is located at the center of the whole Earth. What do you mean by that one? Center of the whole Earth means, see, the, the land surface of the Earth, if you can uh, put it on a flat, uh, flat uh, surface, that can be equally divided into four quadrants. You know, dear brother, if you divide exactly to the four quadrants, the center part of it passes exactly on the Great Pyramid of Giza. Hence, uh, the place is called as Middle East. You know, dear brother, we all know that, uh, uh, you see, the Arab continents, uh, that particular place where Egypt uh, and all these things are there, called as Middle East. Why that name came as Middle East? It is because of uh, this uh, particular reason that the Great Pyramid is located at the center of the whole Earth. Uh, on the whole Earth, on the land surface, it is the center of uh, the Earth. And not only that one, you know, dear brother, we have this uh, exact uh, North Pole and South Pole to our Earth. Isn't it? There's a North Pole and the South Pole. And you know, this North Pole and this South Pole passes exactly on the pyramid without even minute deviation, not even just a fraction of fraction you can see. But exactly the Earth's North and South Pole passes exactly over the entrance of the pyramid. Not only just crosses over the pyramid vaguely, but crosses exactly at the entrance, precisely different. Just imagine during uh, those days, without any modern equipments, without any modern gadgets, they have built it uh, so precisely. And moreover, in the mathematical uh, mystery or mathematical wonder, if you say, so many mathematical calculations have been implemented in this pyramid. See, today we have the formula called as uh, pi. You see, a pi gives the relationship between a circle and a square. You know, we have studied in the school, no? The value of pi is 22 by 7 or 3.14. This pi value, this formula between a circle and a circle and a square is found now, recently. But this formula and this uh, things uh, have been already implemented in the pyramid. You know, dear brother, Isaac Newton, one of the great uh, uh, scientists, you know, he was one of the students of the Bible. He was the one who read from that book of Daniel and prophesied and he foretold that in the coming age, man will travel at the speed of 40 kilometers per hour. You know, at that time, everybody wondered and uh, everybody uh, thought that Isaac Newton was a fool and uh, he has gone mad. But today, whatever he has spoken, we can see all these things have been implemented before our eyes. And one of the things uh, he brought to light was uh, different scales of measurement. You see, dear brother, until such time, there was uh, different scales of measurement in the whole world. Like, for example, FPS system, CGS system, MK, <clears throat> all these different types of systems were there in this world. During, because of this uh, different types of system, dear brethren, there is to be lot of differences among the scientists when they used to calculate different uh, inventions and formulas. Like, for example, you see, the FPS system was implemented in America, the Western countries, and the CGS system and the metric system, that means the SI system, was implemented in the Asia continent. You see, whenever the, there used to be any invention or discussion between the scientists, they had to convert this FPS system to SI system using a particular formula. And while converting this one, there was minute errors coming. And that is the time, dear brother, you see, 
Isaac Newton and the whole world decided to have a common type of measuring system that is called the standard measuring system, dear brethren. And that is a meter, kilometer, uh, kilogram and second system. You see, in India, uh, how do we measure uh, length? It is meter, isn't it? How many kilometer, isn't it? We don't uh, uh, measure it by the foot. Uh, in Americans, uh, in America in olden days, they used to measure by foot. How many foot? Or when you calculate uh, a weight, we used to calculate uh, by kilogram, gram, kilogram. But uh, in uh, Western countries, uh, they used to uh, calculate on pound. You see, pound, how many pounds? Uh, isn't it, uh, dear brethren? And moreover, even liquid was measured in gallons in the Western continents. But uh, here, they used to have liters uh, and time. Uh, seconds, minutes, variation was there now. So, this was a different types of uh, measurement system, dear brethren. But uh, now, recently, you know, in the last century, all the scientists have discussed and they came to conclusion that uh, we need to maintain a single measuring system. And since then, this SI system is implemented all over the world. But for your surprise, dear brethren, the same calculations of metric system is already implemented in the Great Pyramid of Giza. And moreover, the measurements of the Great Pyramid of Giza really coincides very much with the measurements of the ark which Noah built, with the measurements of the tabernacle which Moses built in the wilderness, and even with the measurements of the temple which Solomon built. And not only that one, you know, there's an astronomical uh, uh, secret also in this pyramid. Like, for example, the distance between the earth and the sun is uh, 9,184 million miles. That uh, distance is shown in the pyramid between the relationship of the uh, perpendicular line and the base line, the, the angle. So if you use those calculations, you can find out the distance between the sun and the earth. And moreover, this pyramid has got some air passages and those air passages exactly meets the two important constellations mentioned in the Bible. And one is Orion, uh, that is mentioned in the book of Job. And another is Draco. You know, what do you mean by Draco? So what comes to your mind? Dragon, the great dragon, the Orion. Uh, God told to Job, no? Uh, can you uh, bind the uh, yeah, sweet incense of Orion, Pleiades? See, that is recorded uh, in the Bible. And these uh, constellations are uh, exactly passing through this uh, air passage that you present. And moreover, if you draw a straight line from the entrance of the pyramid in, in synchronizing with the passage line, that straight line exactly comes and touches the place of Bethlehem where our Lord was born. And moreover, dear brethren, today we have an international time zone that is Greenwich huh? time zone. You see, GMT, they call it no? Greenwich Meridian Time. And uh, many of the scientists have uh, told that uh, if you pass this Greenwich timeline from the pyramid, there will be almost a equal time for the entire world. Dear brethren, and uh, one of the wonders is that uh, the pyramid has got some pyramid inches calculations. Sir. This is not fixed by any of us. These are fixed by many, many great engineers who have made intense research on this pyramid. You know, the base length. Huh? According to pyramid inches, that is exactly 365 and a quarter pyramid inches. Now, uh, as soon as we mentioned 365 and a quarter, what comes to our mind is that uh, huh? number of days in our calendar year. So, with all this wonder, who built this pyramid? Why did they build this pyramid with such scientific, geographical, mathematical calculations? And for what purpose? Many believe that uh, this pyramid is a coffin, huh? is a grave of a great King Khufu. But dear brethren, you see, 
if you go to the pyramid and many have visited also you have taken this class several thousands of times and many of the thousands of the people who have heard this class i given a witness that they have visited this pyramid and they have never seen even one carving on the wall of the pyramid neither inside nor outside there is no ancient carvings found in the pyramid and moreover there was no there was there was no mummy found or any valuable things belong to anybody was found inside the pyramid and moreover you see compared to other pyramids this is the only pyramid in egypt where all the passages are above the ground level if you see all the pyramids see like for example next to this pyramid is there are two other pyramids you see the base uh, uh, line that are marked in the red uh, you see this is the base line this is the ground level all the chambers of the pyramid are below this uh, ground level but only in this pyramid majority of them are above the uh, uh, ground level so this is uh, shows that uh, this is not a grave this is not a coffin to preserve anybody's dead body and neither was there any relics uh, or uh, uh, neither was there any carvings found on the wall of the pyramid but uh, these things are found in a neighboring uh, pyramid so many come to a conclusion that uh, this is a space observatory and still uh, some believe that it is a alien launch pad and still uh, many believe it's a secret vault uh, built to preserve and keep uh, valuable things uh, but dear brethren uh, let us uh, think a little bit uh, uh, for a moment and see do anybody build will build such a great pyramid with so much of calculations and preciseness just for uh, these things really but uh, no uh, then who is the uh, builder and who is the architect who is the master builder for this one if you see surely it must be none other than our uh, supreme god dear then then if god has built it then through whom he might have built it this is only a suggestion because uh, there is no verse in the scripture that uh, Uh, somebody of the bible built it but uh, we believe that job might have built it because we read in the book of job that job was one of the richest person of the middle east so mostly god might have used job or god might have used melchizedek melchizedek who came and met abraham and abraham came huh types of all the things huh what he had to melchizedek melchizedek was a king and the priest of salem he was a priest of god you see mostly god might have used this persons to build the pyramid because they were worshipers of the one true god they brethren then uh, if it is uh, built by god then is there any reference in the bible if you see yes the bible speaks about a chief cornerstone so what do you mean by chief cornerstone these two verses like example ephesians 220 and psalms 118 22 the uh, verse speaks about a chief cornerstone and says jesus himself is the chief cornerstone so what do you mean by chief cornerstone whenever we built a house huh eh, you see we place the first stone many believe that the, the first stone is called as the chief cornerstone but dear brethren uh, is the house built only upon a single stone no there are four to five corners and uh, every stone bears the weight equally then only you can build the house then uh, which is the chief cornerstone what is the meaning of this verse dear brethren this verse and this uh, uh, particular verse is applicable only to the great pyramid you see dear brethren the pyramid has how many corners eh? it has got four corners on the bottom you see but there is a fifth corner on the top which is the main and the chiefest of all just remove this uh, top uh, corner the fifth one the pyramid loses its perfection the pyramid remains no more as a pyramid it loses its perfection dear brethren therefore this is the chief cornerstone so jesus in the bible when he is referred to the chief cornerstone he is referred none of the below cornerstones he is referred to the main the top head because jesus is called the head of the church he is the head he is the lord he is the master 
So he is the one who is above everything. You see, therefore, the fifth main chief cornerstone is none other than our Lord Jesus Christ. And moreover, dear brethren, you can see in this uh, uh, slide, you see, the pyramid is a perfect structure. You rotate it in whichever direction you want. Left, right, uh, top, right, upside down, anything. Pyramid remains the same. You see, you are saying that one, huh? see, the pyramid shape is changing. It is being rotating, revolving. You do whatever you want, yet the same structure remains. It doesn't change. This is the wonder about the pyramid. And this is applicable only to one structure, and that is the pyramid. Okay. If there are so many uh, implications, and uh, it seems to be that uh, all these things are connected to the Bible, but is there any direct verse in the Bible saying that a uh, pyramid is the witness of God? Yes, there is a verse. Let us read it in Isaiah 19, chapter verses 19 to 20. Can uh, anybody read Isaiah 19, chapter verses 19 to 20? 20. Uh, Sister Menica, you're there? Sister Menica? Brother Suraj, Sister Menica? Yes, Pastor. Sister, it's... Isaiah 19 chapter, verses 19 and 20. Sister. 19 and 20. <clears throat> 19 and 20. Isaiah chapter 19, verse 19 and 20. In this day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. And it shall be for the sign and for the witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressor. And he shall send them a savior and a great one. And he shall deliver them. See, it says, in that day, there shall be an altar to the Lord. And where it shall be? It shall be in middle of Egypt. And also a pillar at the border of Egypt. Now you will tell me, brother, you will think a little bit. How can one particular thing be at the center as well as the border? See, a thing can be at the border or at the center. It can't be at both the places. See, how can this particular thing be at both the places? Dear brethren, this is can be found only applicable to the great pyramid of Giza. And moreover, it says, this uh, pillar, this altar of the Lord shall be a witness unto the Lord. You see, he should give a witness about God's plan for the whole mankind. When? When the people will cry to the Lord because of the oppressor. And he shall send them a great savior. We all know who is the savior. Who will come at the second advent and save the whole world. It is none other than our Lord our Jesus Christ who will return very shortly and bless all the people of this world. Dear brethren. So this is speaking about this pillar or altar. It should be in the center of Egypt as well as at the border of Egypt. Dear brethren, you know, uh, Egypt is divided into two parts, Upper Egypt and uh, Lower Egypt. This is done by the government of Egypt itself. We have not done it. Uh, the entire Egypt is divided into two equal parts, the Upper Egypt and the Lower Egypt. You know, dear brethren, this border of the Upper Egypt and the Lower Egypt passes exactly over the center of the pyramid. This is a proof that this pyramid is located exactly at the center of Egypt and at the border of both the upper and the lower Egypt. Hence, uh, this uh, pyramid is given the name as Giza. So, why the pyramid of Giza, you know, the name is given? Because Giza in Egypt means border. That means this pyramid is located at the center of Egypt as well as at the border of Egypt. Okay, if this is the altar of God, if this is the pillar of God, then does it witness about God's plan? Yes, of course, surely this pyramid gives a wonderful witness about the 
divine plan of the ages for the whole world. How, how, how does it fit us? We will see shortly. Last week, we went very fastly, but today we'll see in very much detail. You see, the pyramid has uh, chambers. It has got only uh, two chambers and a pit. One of the chambers is called as king's chamber, and below that one is the queen's chamber, and below to everybody, uh, no, sorry, below to all the chambers is the pit. And there are uh, three passages leading to this three chambers. One is the ascending passage, one is the horizontal passage, and one is the descending passage. Dear brethren, you see, the entrance of the pyramid is a 17th floor. Just imagine, 17 floors you need to climb to get to the entrance. That is almost at the, you know, you know at the very bottom of the pyramid, you can say, compared to the huge structure. You see, dear brethren, but uh, that virtual entrance was totally closed until a thief, you see, huh? until a thief carved inside the pyramid, but he might get some uh, uh, very, very gold and precious things. But unfortunately, he could not find anything. Okay. But uh, as soon as you enter the pyramid, the first passage that comes before you is the descending passage. And that uh, descending passage goes to the pit. Now, what is the height of the descending passage? If you see, the height of the descending passage is just only four feet height. So, four feet high means a person who gets inside the passage of the pyramid, he can't walk uprightly. He need to bend himself and walk inside the pyramid. You see, the person, this is the real and the live photo. You see, huh? a sister is walking up the huh? pyramid. This is the descending passage. She is walking down the descending passage. She can't stand uprightly. Why? Because the height is just four feet. And you saw, you said, the passage is very descending. So as soon as you enter the descending passage, so immediately you come down to the pit. So this is how you need to uh, walk through the uh, pyramid, uh, descending passage, if you need to ever walk inside. And uh, that uh, descending passage comes directly and touches the pit. So we all know, so what is the meaning of this one? We all know what does this represent? The descending passage. You see, man, when originally created, he was created perfect. Uh, he could have stood uh, upright before God. Adam, when he was created, he was created in the likeness of God, in the image of God. But once when Adam sinned, he fell into sin. You see, he fell into sin and to degradation and uh, entered a descending passage, uh, entered the fallen condition of sin and death. Uh, and uh, where did that way lead to? That way led to death. Therefore, we see in Matthew 7, 13 and 14, no? It says, no? Three ways. Remember the class of three ways. Kindly read. Anybody? Matthew 7, chapter 13 and 14. Can anybody read? Jerry, in its extreme thing, for why is the gear in God is the way that leads it to destruction? And there are many ways go, go by, in by it. There is narrow the gate and the field is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. See, enter you at the straight gate. Wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. You see, that way that leading to destruction is very wide. And everybody are walking in it. But then as soon as a person enters inside a descending passage, he can't change his path. You see, it's very difficult to change the path because just four by four, you can't change the path whenever you want. So it directly comes to the pit. Similarly, once born in Adam, mankind goes to the pit. That pit uh, represents death. And who was the first person to walk in the Broadway? It is none other than our father, Adam. Adam was the one who inaugurated the Broadway and who walked the Broadway leading to death. You see, Adam walked the broad way for a period of 930 years. But today, the road has become so slippery, the passage has become so smooth, because many people have walked in it, that uh, as soon as a man is born, 
he goes to death. It leads him to sin and death. Therefore, so many people cover the huh, road in a very short span of time. 30 years, 40 years. Some people are even faster. 10 years. They'll finish this course, dear brethren. This is the huh, descending passage. Therefore, we see in Romans 5, 12, no? Therefore, by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men. So all have sinned. So God knew that uh, everybody was sin in Adam. So he condemned everybody uh, to death in Adam. So today, because of Adam, everybody are on the descending passage. Uh, descending passage leads to the pit. Uh, what is there in the pit? Uh, what does the pit represent? The pit represents death condition. Therefore, we read now Proverbs 14, 12. Kindly read. Uh, Brother Suraj, can you read? Proverbs 14, 12. Suraj, brother. Sure, sure, Pastor. Um, there is a way which seemed right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Yes, brother. Correct. There is a way that seemeth right to man. It seems very good, very correct. But the end thereof is the pit. Pit means death. Isn't it? Pit. Whenever a man dies, where do we put him? We put him to the pit. That means graveyard. Grave. Is there water in the grave? No, there is no water in the grave. Read it in the Bible. Similarly, there is no water in the pit. Zechariah 9, chapter 11th verse. Zechariah 9, chapter 11th verse. Gopal Rana, brother, can you read? Gopal Rana, brother. Zechariah 9, 11. Uh, Zechariah 9, 11. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit, wherein is no water. Wherein there is no water. Pit wherein there is no water. In the grave, there is no hope until Jesus Christ came, dear brethren. And God is saying, from the blood of the covenant of Jesus Christ, he shall release all the prisoners of death from this pit where there is no water. Until Jesus came and died on the cross, there was no hope, dear brethren. Hence, see, when you come down the descending passage, after coming a few distance, there is one passage where you can escape and go to the king's chamber and the queen's chamber. That passage is called as ascending passage. But again, if you see, the height of the ascending passage is still the same. You see, it is uh, again a four feet height. Even if you want to walk, you can't walk it properly. And moreover, you can't even enter it. Why? Because it is blocked by a 50 ton, very heavy granite plug. You see, what has happened? Okay, this is the descending passage and this is the ascending passage. But the entrance of the ascending passage itself is blocked by a very weighty, very heavy granite stone. What is the meaning of this one, dear brother? This represents the law. After man sinned, after everybody fell into sin because of Adam, after 2000 years, God gave the law through Moses. If somebody willed, if somebody attempted, they could have walked up the ascending passage, high, very high, you see, high standard of living, and they could have come to the king's chamber and the queen's chamber, but none of them could keep the law and be justified before God. We have got a lot of verses. You can note it down. Leviticus 18.5, Romans 8 chapter, third verse, and uh, Romans 3.20, and Galatians 2.21. Let us read only one verse, and that is Romans 3.20. Can anybody read Romans 3.20? Romans 3.20. We got this. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. See, by the deeds of the law, no man shall be justified before God. So you could not uh, climb up God's holy path and be justified before God. Why? Because it is as if blocked by a granite plug. Hence, uh, None could keep the law and be justified. Therefore, God 
sent his son. Is there no other way of salvation if you say, yes, there is a way of salvation. Bible says no. Huh? That way of salvation is uh, found uh, in none other than our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we see in the Bible in Acts 4, chapter 12 verse, there is no other name given under heaven whereby man can be saved than the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only way. He is the way. He is the life and he is the truth. Through Jesus Christ, a way was opened and that way is shown in the pyramid in the well shaft. You said, dear brother, uh, we can read one more verse in the Bible. Uh, let us read Hebrews 10.20. Menaka, sister, can you read Hebrews 10.20? Sure, pastor. Hebrews 10.20. Okay. 10.20. Okay. Hebrews uh, chapter 10, verse 20. By a new and living way which he had consecrated to us through the fell, that is to say his flesh. You see, a new and a living way he has opened to us. That is through uh, his flesh. Hence, what happened? Uh, when Jesus died on the cross, uh, the veil of the temple was torn. Once his flesh was sacrificed, immediately God opened the way to the heavenly salvation. This is the meaning of the well shaft, the only way where you can go up and reach the king's chamber and the queen's chamber. Dear brother, this well shaft, you see, there is a special yeah, place in this uh, well shaft and that is called as grotto. You see, this grotto is a natural rock formation. So if you go inside the pyramid, this is how it naturally looks. This is not man-made. See, all the great blocks have been queried in the query, the shaper in the query, and brought inside the pyramid. But this uh, special rock, what is called as grotto, it was a natural rock formation. And while building it, we don't know for what purpose they left it. But uh, this is how it looks. You see, if you observe carefully, how does that rock look? It looks like a face of a lamb. Now, who is the lamb in the Bible? The lamb of God, our Lord, Jesus Christ. He was a lamb slain from the foundation of the earth, dear brethren. And he is the lamb through which we can have access to the upper chambers. That means, if you need to walk perfectly and please God, we need to walk through the grotto. You see, once if we come through the grotto, there is an opening. And uh, at that opening, at that juncture, you can see all the parts very clear. So only if you come through Jesus Christ and lay a brain, what will happen? We will get the enlightenment. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is not only the way, he is the truth. He is the truth and he is the way for life. Different forms of life, dear brethren. Huh? See, therefore, you see, Jesus is called as the world savior. He is not the savior of only Christians, but he is savior of the entire mankind. Therefore, if we come through the well shaft, we can go to the two chambers. One is the king's chamber, other is the queen's chamber. Now, what are these two chambers represent? These two chambers represent heavenly salvation and the earthly salvation. The king's chamber is above the queen's chamber. So this, of course, represents the heavenly salvation. And the queen's chamber below the king's chamber represents the earthly salvation. We all know, dear brethren, what did God promise to, to Abraham? I'll make the seed as the stars of the sky and the sand of the seashore, dear brethren. So God has made a wonderful plan. In this plan, there are two salvations. See? We have studied from the beginning till now various classes. But this concept, really, brethren, each and every Christian should understand it properly that there are two salvations. Now, if you believe in Jesus Christ, we can achieve the heavenly salvation. But even if you don't believe Jesus Christ now, what will happen? In the thousand years, at the second coming of Jesus Christ, you will be going to be resurrected on the same earth and achieve the earthly salvation. But you can't go to the heavenly salvation. There's a difference between these two. Therefore, huh? what happens? Huh? If we come from the grotto, you see, there is a huh? passage 
which is leading to the king's chamber and that uh, passage is called as the grand gallery huh? then you need to go to the antechamber and then only go to the king's chamber now what are these three steps called what is this compared to called chosen faithful jesus said no huh? they that are him they that are with him are called chosen and faithful read revelation 1714 revelation 1714 home brother can you read home brother yes yes brother revelation 1714 brother revelation 1721 1714 17 chapter verse 14 14 these shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is a lord of lords and king of king things and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful see called chosen and faithful you just can't be in the call stage you need to be come to the chosen stage and next uh, remain faithful till our death and moreover huh, this grand gallery is really grand now what is the difference between grand gallery and ascending passage ascending passage was just only 4 feet high but uh, this uh, grand gallery is almost 7 feet high 7 feet high means uh, huh, sorry almost 7 times high that means it is 28 feet high and the width is 7 feet and uh, there are support for a person to walk up the grand gallery you see this is a, a real and a natural photo this is a grand gallery it is not so difficult for a man to walk huh? in the ascending passage descending passage it was only 4 feet but this uh, grand gallery is 28 feet high you can comfortably walk and they got lot of support huh? as a grip to walk up this grand gallery what does this represent dear brethren huh? this makes the path very easy this represents the grace that god has given us in the gospel age because of our lord jesus christ we are under the grace we are not under the law under the law there was no grace if anybody committed any sin they were only condemned to death the only penalty under the law was death but under jesus christ what do we have we have grace we have continued grace grace upon grace so that we can climb up and come to the great step what is this great step after we believing jesus christ a person needs to take a great step of consecrating himself to our lord that means giving his life to our lord what does apostle paul say ah huh? dear brethren i beseech before you that you offer your bodies as a living sacrifice read romans 12 one Romans twelve chapter first verse, Romans twelve one. But the Suraj, can you read? Mm, yes, brother. Uh, just give me a minute. Oh. Mm. Romans twelve uh, one. Correct. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy. acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service okay offer your bodies as a living sacrifice that means as we are living we should live a life which is pleasing to our lord that is a great step a great decision not majority of the christians take this decision they try to live a very comfortable life in this world then after taking the great decision you can't just walk in through the king chamber you need to bow down three times Mr. Chairman, you need to really bow down, stand again, really bow down and stand again, again bow down and stand again three times. You see, dear brother, you can just see this uh, uh, photo. You will come to know. You will see. Uh, one minute, I'll show you now. Okay. Ah, uh, see, this is the first bowing, and the second time you need to bow, and the third time you need to bow. Then only you can come to the uh, king's chamber. So, what is the uh, meaning of this one what did jesus say 
if any man wants to be my disciple what he has to do huh what he has to do does anybody know kindly read it in matthew 16:24 menika sister can you read matthew 16:24 Manika sister, are you there? Okay, Gopal Rana brother, can you read? Matthew 16, 24. Okay, brother. Uh, Matthew 16, 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. See? Let him deny himself. That is the first time you need to bow to the Lord. Second time, carry his cross. That is the second time you need to go to the Lord. You see, third one is that uh, remain faithful till death. Follow me. Isn't it? Deny yourself means deny your all our aims and ambitions, everything for the purpose uh, of the cross. Carry the cross means what? Not just put a dollar on the, uh, you see, on the neck, uh, around the neck and walk. Uh, carry the cross means carrying responsibility, the shame and the contempt. Uh, Huh? For our Lord Jesus Christ, cause for the cause of the truth, and that one has to be done till the end, till the death. Follow me, dear brethren. Then only we reach the king's chamber. Now, what is there in the king's chamber? In the king's chamber, there is no coffin. Please note it down. There is no coffin, or no any coffin boxes or grave uh, dead body boxes are kept there. You see, the only thing is there is this coffer. You see, the coffer is not the coffin. Okay, but that coffer, there is no lid upon it at all. So what does it signify? It signifies that death has no power over the faithful church class who reach the heavenly salvation. Death has no power over the God's children. You see, Jesus said, no, huh? Huh? I'll give you the keys of heaven. The power of death shall not Rule over you. He said to Jesus, Peter, no? Now read one more verse. Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. Sister Menaka, if you are online, if you are able to read, you can read. Or else, Brother Ashish or Brother Akash can read. Blessed and holy is he that part in the first resurrection, so the second death has no power, but they shall be priest of God in Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. See? Uh, blessed as he that uh, had the part in the first resurrection on such a second death has no power. That means no death at all. They are immortal. And moreover, you know, dear brethren, the size of this coffer, it is exactly the measurement of the, you see, the Ark of the Covenant mentioned in the tabernacle. See, the Ark of the Covenant represents uh, the glory of God. God's presence was there. So that represents. Uh, the faithful class of people who go to the heavenly salvation and rule with our Lord Jesus Christ for a period of thousand years. You see, dear brethren, among all the classes what we have taken till now, we have read about the plan of God for the entire mankind. See, God has made plan for entire mankind. He has made plan for the believers as well as the unbelievers. The believers, sir, those who believe Jesus Christ and follow him, where do, where do they go? Do they go to the heavenly salvation? Yes or no? Can anybody tell me? If you believe Jesus Christ now, do we get a heavenly salvation? Gopal brother, home brother, Suresh brother, tell me. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Okay. So what about the people who don't believe Jesus now? Suresh brother, what about them? Suraj brother, home brother, Gopal brother, what about the people who don't believe Jesus Christ now? Yes, there is an earthly salvation. God has made a plan for them also. And that is the earthly salvation. And that is shown in the Queen's Chamber and the horizontal passage. You see, you need to go to the Queen's Chamber means you need to walk in the horizontal passage. And the speciality about the horizontal passage is that horizontal passage 
the first six parts can be divided into uh, you see the horizontal passage the entire passage can be divided into seven equal parts you see and the first six parts is just four feet in height but the last seventh part is seven feet in height what does uh, this represent you see you can see the real photo you see the first six parts is just four feet a person even if he wants to walk uprightly he can't walk uprightly but only when the seventh part if he reaches he can stand perfectly and walk erectly see this is the natural photo you see the last seventh part now what does this represent dear brethren we know the beautiful plan of god god has permitted evil in this world for a period of how many years can anybody tell me god has permitted evil in this world for how many years what is the period does anybody know the answer brother suraj brother home brother gopal brother One how many years hmm 1000 mm 6000 years isn't it god has permitted evil in this world for a period of 6000 years during which none of the persons are able to walk uprightly perfectly before god but during the second coming of jesus christ he shall rule on this earth for a period of 1000 years and all could not walk uprightly now will surely walk uprightly in the 1000 years reign of christ that is the time when jesus will bless entire mankind all the dead people will come back to life on the same earth and be blessed this is the meaning of the queen's chamber that is the earthly salvation for all the rest of the mankind who not believe jesus christ now will believe him in the 1000 years at the second coming of lord jesus christ dear brethren uh, when jesus is going to return on this earth he is going to resurrect all the dead mankind and bring back to life and uh, he will lift uplift each and every person from sickness and death and bring into the human perfection okay and that is the plan which god has made for the whole world okay yeah, that is the reason jesus has been given a period of 1000 years to rule dear brethren ha huh? hope uh, this is secret of the pyramid is uh, understood if uh, anybody still have any doubts you can definitely ask me we will definitely clarify all your doubts so request everybody to please subscribe to this channel and share this with all your christian friends and uh, neighbors so they must understand the plan of god for the whole man